Today I'm going to show you how to make a really good forging hammer out of any regular sledgehammer head. Hi, I'm Dennis Frechette and welcome back. Today I'm going to be reposting a video I did a little while ago and it was about how to regrind a sledgehammer head into a forging hammer. This is a low cost solution to a good forging hammer if you don't have the means or the ability to reforge a regular sledgehammer head into a cross speed. I've also included a little bit of information on hammer handles. When I use this clip in another video, I made just a statement that said that, you know, this handle will kill you. Uh, so not surprisingly, I did get a few concerned uh, comments from people who didn't really understand what I meant by that. So I want to apologize for that. That was an oversight on my part, but I will correct that in this video. And as always, uh, check the description. I quite often, or I will from now on, try to have links to other videos that are related to this subject or just videos that I think you should be looking at. So that's what I have for you today and uh, I hope it'll help you out. The hammer that you see on the left is a standard cross peen shape and I forged it from a common sledgehammer which is similar to the one that you see on the right hand side on the anvil. Reforging a readily available hammer head like this is a really good way to make a cross peen or any other kind of hammer for that matter. But it does require a fairly good sized forge and a fairly heavy anvil to support the work that it you know, needs to be done to reshape a heavy hammer like this. It's great if you can do it, but if you're just starting out and you don't have a lot of equipment, uh, there is a much simpler way to get a good forging hammer. Here I'm working with a couple of club hammers. They weigh three pounds. Sometimes they're called Mason's hammers, but they're just the short stubby handled little hammers that are available just about anywhere. I believe I got these from Harbor Freight, but you know, any hardware store carries some form of hammer like this. The hammer on the right still has the factory ground face on it, and when you buy these hammers, both sides of the hammer are going to be identical. The face is going to be ground more or less flat, and the transition between the face and the bevel that surrounds the face is going to have a very, very sharp edge on it. If you try to forge anything with a hammer face like this, you're going to find that those sharp edges are going to create deep scars in your work, and they're going to be very hard to get rid of, especially if the only thing you have to work with is the hammer that created them in the first place. The hammer on the left shows how I grind my hammer faces. This view of the hammer head shows the main striking surface of the hammer. So directly above us is the hammer handle, and the very end of the handle is pointing directly at the camera. You can see how the hammer is divided into three separate areas. The center of the hammer is left essentially flat so that you can do some hammer refining of the surface as well as driving tools like chisels and punches. The outside edges are radiused and these are the edges of the hammer that are going to be used for fullering. In this view I've turned the hammer handle on its side so the handle now is laying on the table. You can see how this flat center section of the hammer extends across the entire face and the two outside edges have only minimal radius edges. Now I've turned the hammers around so that you're looking at the side profile of each hammer. The hammer on the right is still the factory face and the one on the left shows the modification that I've done to create a cross peen on that side of the hammer. So believe it or not this tiny ridge that I've ground into this face is all that is necessary for a cross peen. You don't have to have that classic cross peen shape. As long as you have a raised section that is perpendicular to the handle right in the middle of the face somewhere, you're going to have an effective fuller that's going to allow you to spread the metal across the width of the bar. So with these two simple modifications, you've created an effective forging hammer. 
you haven't changed the overall weight of the hammer. So if you started off with a three pound hammer, you still basically have a three pound hammer. And more importantly, you haven't changed the balance of the hammer. Because if your only option to create a classic cross peen is to grind away one end of the hammer, you're going to drastically change the weight of the hammer and the balance of the hammer. It's going to feel a lot more clumsy. So this solves both of those problems and it's a modification you can do in about half an hour with an angle grinder. The last thing that you need to do to turn this club hammer into a forging hammer is to replace the handle. And if you're working with a hammer that has a standard length handle, chances are you're going to need to spend a lot of time shaving that handle down because most modern hammers have handles that are way too thick. These hammers are handy if you're working in a confined space and you just don't have the room to swing a regular hammer, but beyond that I really have no idea why they're shaped this way. One thing is for sure, this handle is definitely not designed to protect your arm from injury if you need to be doing any amount of forging over an extended period of time. All of my forging hammers have a long thin neck between the hammer head and the part of the handle that I'm actually hanging on to. The hammer on the right is one of my old forging hammers. It's not a cross beam, but I did use it a lot for forging, and it weighs almost twice as much as the club hammer, and yet the hammer handle is half the size. This thin, flexible area really dampens the shock wave that tends to travel up most hammer handles that are way too thick. This is the cross peen that I'm using now. I'm still working on this handle. I thinned it down quite a bit, but I have quite a bit more to go. I'm just doing it stages just to make sure that I don't take it too thin and make it too brittle. But it seems like the grain's pretty good in this handle, so I think I'm just going to get a little more aggressive with it and take it down to where I think it needs to be. This little ball peen is one of my favorite hammers. It's roughly 40 years old. It's just a basic hardware store item. But look at the thin neck on this. Compare this to the modern ball peen that has a table leg for a handle. So this really illustrates how far we've gone downhill in terms of our basic understanding of hand tools. This was a mass produced item, but every part of its design had the user in mind. And it's been replaced with tools that are literally trying to hurt us.